Hey, welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to explain Shopify filters on the collection page. So in this video, you will learn about how important filters are, how it works, and what are the things you have to know about filters. It is very important to understand how the filter works before we apply it on the collection page. That's why in this video, I, I will explain everything you need to know. And I try my best to simplify uh, this concept because it is one of the complicated part of Shopify team development. But I try to make it easy for you to understand. So in the previous video, we added this sorting. We should also have filter. Like what is filter and why it is important? Let's take a look at the down team and the website that they have. This is the demo. These are the filters. Using filters, you can add uh, pricing, it's sorting from let's say an X and then Y, it will be the maximum. And we also have a color selector in here. So these are all filter. Filter let user easily filter the product and find the product that they want. For example, if I need a red shoe with a size of let's say medium, I can go to the website and say, okay, I want to filter by red shoe and the size should be medium. It will t tell, it will just give me all those product instead of scrolling or searching for the product that I don't want. So filters are very important. And also availability is a part of filter, which I want to check the product is available or which I want to purchase. The other example uh, is this iconic website. And these are the filter in the sidebar. So you check all the filter. This is the category. We can also call it collections. But let's check out some of their filters. When we filter, it send another Ajax request, grabbing the product and displaying only the product that we want. And in Shopify, you can also add all of this filter. There are some limits that I will talk in this video, but basically it will be the same, something like this. You can, you can do similar thing, uh, but I think the best feature is to have for the price range, there should be a range slider that you can uh, increase or decrease. That is filter and you know how important it is to have in a Shopify team. So in Shopify, how does it work? Let me tell you a little bit of history of filtering. Two years ago, there was no filter in Shopify. There was filter, but it was very basic. The only way you could filter was using tags and they, do not, they didn't have any filtering based on the price. They didn't have filtering based on the variant, but recently they have added those feature. If you come to the store navigation, in here, you will see there are store navigation, search functionality, and filter. Filter is what we are interested in. If I come here, you have two way of filters. You have a storefront filter, you have this tag filtering. Now, when I first look at a storefront, I thought maybe you have to use a storefront API to send an Ajax request. Two years ago, I think almost three years ago, Shopify introduced a storefront API that you could use GraphQL to send requests to the Shopify and grab the product. It was very complicated and I didn't like it to be honest because there was a lot of JavaScript going on. And especially with the GraphQL request that they give you the data. Recently, they added a storefront filter in the liquid. Now it is much easy. Now you don't have to write a lot of JavaScript. If you don't want to write JavaScript, it's still you can use just the pure liquid and the filters will work just fine. The, the tag filter was the old way. And they also say like uh, in here, the recommended way is the storefront filtering. And at the time of this recording, storefront filtering is only supported on a store 2.0. It will be the same in the future, but in the future, we will have more stores with the store 2.0 themes. This theme that you are developing is of course in a store 2.0. So here is the important thing. Um, how does this filter work? I'll show you like how it works and some resources also. Let's check out the old way of how filter work using tags. I've, if I come here, if I'm on the collection page all in the past, the only way I could filter based on a pro product tag was putting a slash and then the tag name. If let's say the tag name, uh, I, I have a product and the tag is, let's say, what should I tag? New and it is going to go all collection and it's going to return only the product with the tag of new. Currently we don't have any, but I can just quickly go back and add this. If I had two tags, for example, if, if it has a tag of red for the red color, it will return that one. If you want to add more tags, you just put a plus of red and blue. 
That way it will return only the product with red and blue tags. That was the only way to filter. There was no other option to say, I need this price, I need this variant, I wanna combine them together. That is how you filter on tag using the URL in the past. So basically, filtering tag was that much easy. You can go to the documentation and search more about this, how you would do that. How does the storefront like filtering work? The storefront filtering works the same from the product URL, but it is more advanced. It gives you more functionality. And also for the merchant who wanna add the filter, it is easy to add. So where do you add the filter and how it will display? The first thing you have to know is where do you add it? So you can come to the backend of your store, you go to the navigation, and the same thing that you have menus, at the bottom you have collection and search filter. The filter uh, will be applied only on collection and search page. That's why they have the search and the collection and search filters. Here you can add filter. You can see they have some filters already. If you click on this, they have product filter, which are four of them. You have product option or product variance filter. You can also add up to 20 other filters using meta fields. Since we do not have any meta field, we don't see any option to add more of them. But in the future, if I got time, I'll focus on this too. The user will add it in here. Now, as a developer, our job is to display it in the right place on a collection page. For example, I can display it at the top the same way as a down theme, or I can display it in the sidebar. I prefer the sidebar more because the sidebar is always empty in here. And it looks very nice also, similar to iconic website it will display in here. But the design is up to you. You can put it at the top, you can put it at the sidebar, you can put it in the footer if you don't want anyone to see it. But yeah, that is the basic idea of filtering. Now, how does this one work? If you click on the storefront filtering, still, it is the same, it works the same using liquid and the U and URL, but how does it work? If I scroll down, this is basically how it works. In the URL, you add the filter, filter scope, attribute, and value. Now, the attribute scope is optional. You can read through this in here. These are the required fields that if you want to add. What is the filter? The filter will be the name of what you want to filter, okay? And now, scope. Scope is how deep you want to filter. You want to filter based on the product or based on variant. If you are filtering based on the product, add P for the product. If you want to filter based on variant, add V for variant. And then you have the scope type, which we will see um, as we scroll down. And then you have this scope, either you wanna go into options or price or values. If I scroll down a bit, this is a perfect example. Filter, it goes uh, and it filter the product, product type, and then the shoes. Sorry if I'm, my picture is going, I don't know what happened to my camera. But yeah, this is how it works. You have filter, go to variant, then option, the color is equal to red. Option is basically saying if the variant color is red. This is how it works. If you wanna combine both together, you can just put an, put an and in here, in between them, it will go and grab both of those product. Shoes that has a color of red. That is how it works. And also you can add more of this if you have a size, wherein it, this is how it works. You, you just add this in the URL and it will filter it for you and return the product for you. Send an Ajax request, it will give you those product. Easy stuff to do, right? Now, if I scroll down a little bit, do you have filter types? Again, variant or like product or variant level. On a product level, you can only search for the product type vendor at the time of this recording and also meta field. As I said, you can have up to 20 filters. So using meta field, you can add more filter. For example, you can say this product is made on China or it is made on Canada or Australia or any other country. Based on that, you can store it on product uh, meta field. Scrolling down to the bottom, this is how it looks for the meta field. You just say product meta field. My, this is going to be the field name, and this is going to be the this is going to be the namespace, and this is the the, the key, and this will be the value. I will discuss more about it in the future, but for now, what else you have to know? In the sidebar, the reason I show you documentation is because uh, 
if you are if you don't want to like follow the video you in the future you look at the documentation you have to find out where you are looking at and in here two important things are you have to notice support storefront filtering and storefront filtering ux guideline the guideline is very important it shows you how you should display it and these are the accepted uh, design you have to follow the storefront filtering will give you the code the support one so if you come here or you have collection and search if you click on the collection they will give you the ops not that collection if i scroll down this is the code for for the collection page so you can just add it it does not have a lot of like scripts it is just pure html and it works just fine but you can add your own javascript and it is going to cover all the filter types for example price range and everything else scrolling down this one will be for the search page and these are like two different filters that you have to add on different pages the guideline on the other hand is very important so if you come here shopify give you some example of how you want to list if it is a list make sure it is a checkbox they are accessible if it has a range you must have like a range price of something like this which uh, you can do with html and javascript and how you want to display it either it is horizontal or vertical if it is horizontal the same as uh, like down theme make sure it is displayed properly in here but if it is vertical you can also display it vertically but you can give it option to the user also if you are building a theme for shopify theme store it is really good to have that option for the user to pick which one they want to display either horizontal or vertical in the sidebar scrolling down to the bottom um, they should also up show the applied filter which is important scrolling at the bottom what is more important like they have more design in here how it should display on mobile these are something you have to follow you have to uh, uh, read through the article yourself but at the bottom they say use progressive enhancement that says uh, do as much as you can without javascript but if you want to add javascript that is how you want like give a good user experience for filtering for live updating the product grids so yeah that is how filter works now our job is to apply it on our team before i apply that let me show you the team that we have so currently in the down team that we copied we change a lot of things here is a code facet dot liquid you can still open it but we removed it from the collection page we can include it back to collection page and this is also the required javascript this is a lot of code right for the price for everything uh, that they have everything is written in here and it is also accessible and everything looks and works great if i come here this is the whole code for that filter now now think about it if i am going to rewrite the whole thing with alpine.js how much time it will take right it is a lot like 500 lines of code in here i'll see in the next video what i can do if i will rewrite the whole thing in alpine.js i'll let you know otherwise we can use the same thing we can just customize it i will show you how exactly it works that way you can apply the same thing in your team i hope this video has been informative thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video